right guys new day in the shop uh, I know this probably surprises none of you but uh, one of the things since uh, I have a 2007 model uh, Chevy pickup it only has 53,000 miles on it my tow rig is a 3500 it's a uh, pretty low mileage because there's a military surplus truck but uh, this is pretty nice pickup it's been really good to me i've done a few things to it to get it to uh you know run a little better you know obviously i run diesel mechanic shop so i know a couple of tips and tricks to get the most out of it so i'm super happy with it this is an lbz uh duramax a lot of people don't know the years but uh, i'm kind of a duramax guy so the first year they came out the duramax was 2001 and that is known as an lb7 duramax uh, they went through 2003 uh, actually 2004 was the last year uh, of that it was like a split year 2004 and a half and they went to what they called that LLY they fixed some things some problems that they had with the LB7 the LB7 the injectors were uh, basically inside uh, or in the valve cover and then through the valve cover and so they're kind of a pain to work on um, <clears throat> mainly because they did have some injector issues sealing uh, in the heads and then the injectors initially had a recall so Duramax right out of the gate kind of got a bad rap uh, for those injectors which Bosch fixed that problem and then once you get the updated injectors on those are not as bad drawback is it is not a very powerful uh, engine because of what it is it's the first generation of Duramax so uh loi they fixed that issue and they went to a newer bosch injector that's outside of the head and it uh, is allowed you know it's accessible through the side and you don't have to pull the valve cover to get to them the problem with that is is gm and their infinite wisdom went to a thinner head gasket and they ended up on the lly years uh duramax they called them the cat eyes they went to a from 2004 and a half until 2005 and then in 06 they came out with the lbz so the lois they were just made famous because of the head gasket issues being too thin and uh, they always had head gasket issues when they get too much power going on them and they had a little bit more power in the programming so it, they were pretty prone for head gasket problems now all these years have the allison transmission lb7 lly have the five speed which is proven transmission very good uh in 06 they came out with the lbz which is what this truck is and they ran the lbz from 06 to 07 and uh the lbz has an updated head gasket uh which is what they would call the grade c so it's thicker and it's a lot better gasket uh they didn't have any injector issues they had a little bit more pro uh, power in the programming and uh, these trucks are known around you know in the cat eye trucks as being like the holy grail of the duramax because they're so good um, i really like the lbz because they're simple to work on they're not as expensive as the newer trucks to work on and there's less parts uh the turbos are kind of the best it's a vgt turbo um it spools up quick, it tows good, it gets good mileage after you do some programming uh, on the ECM. These, these things just really, really do well. The trucks ride well, the, even for a one ton, this truck rides great. Um, you can ask multiple people, the IFS trucks just ride so much better. So for a tow rig overall, this has been super good. I have had an L, two LOIs, I've had, uh, actually I've had three LOIs. This is my first LBZ and I really, really like this truck. It's been great to me. I haven't had really any issues out of it, but like any truck uh, out there, uh, you're gonna have some type of issues when you use it. So uh, while we were in Moab, I had to replace the power steering pump because it was getting weak. And uh, which is kind of nice whenever you're driving down Loveland Pass and you know, these trucks, the power brake booster is part of the brake system and also the power steering pump is what provides the pressure for that. So when you're going down Loveland Pass, you know, 7% grade for seven, eight miles, just a little bit hairy coming down that side because uh, you need brakes. So I'm thankful I had trailer brakes. And uh, anyways, we replaced it. Um, they went pretty good in the parking lot of the hotel. But uh, I think we were kind of in a rush, ready to get home because it was at the end of the trip um my fleet runner belt which is what this is the green 
it's having a little issue right here. It's starting to come apart. And the reason why is I didn't get this pulley on there all the way. Now, I am a mechanic and that's what I do. So, you know, mechanics, one of their things is, is uh, you got to work on your own stuff even when you don't want to. And so I've got to get this thing ready for uh, driving down to the full size invasion down in Texas at Katemsi Rock. So uh, I've got to get my, my uh, harmonic balancer and pulley pulley installer kit out and I've got to push this on a little bit. So I'm going to get this thing pulled in here. But first, uh, I'm going to get the uh, power washer and uh, clean this thing up really good. And one thing I've gotten into the habit of at my shop is, especially with vehicles uh, that we work on and that we know they're gonna be dirty. If you know you're gonna have to work on it, you're bending over it and getting up and down, uh, you might as well just get the power washer and give this thing a good five, 10 minute rinse. Put, I sprayed some degreaser on this thing last night, get it all cleaned up. So I'm gonna be crawling around on it and I don't have to get it all over me. It's inevitable, but just gotta do it, so. I'm gonna get going, we're gonna get this thing cleaned up and I'll pull in the shop and then we're gonna start putting that uh, pulley on there a little bit farther. And then I uh, got another fleet runner belt uh, coming for it. So we'll get it on there and this thing will be good to go. I'm pretty excited, uh, you know, you gotta get the tow rig ready. You know, set yourself up for success, not for failure. So we're doing pretty good. Went to town this morning, got the new uh, wheels and tires for the mule. Pretty stoked about that, I've never had new new rubber on the Kawasaki Mule. One of the essential tools at the shop here has always been this Kawasaki Mule. Uh, I've had it for a couple of years now. And, uh, I really like it because we're able to take scrap parts away. I've got a pile for other scrap parts and uh, had opportunity to get some new tires and wheels. The old ones were kind of dry rotted. So we're going to get some new ones thrown on here. I don't know if I'll get that done today, but I'll definitely get this truck cleaned up and then we'll see what else we can get into. I might actually work on this this rig a little bit more i need to touch up some paint and uh do some running some airlines but i am kind of waiting on a few packages from amazon to come in my airline so i can run my switches for my air lockers in the cab but uh yeah i got some things i can do today and right now it's beautiful october uh day uh really really nice it's about 70 degrees out and uh, man, it's just it's just a beautiful day. So we're gonna get a couple things done. You guys can come along with me. So let's get it started. I'm getting ready to use this pulley uh, puller installer kit. This is just a O'Reilly special you can see here. So one of the things that I recommend, and I've done this the wrong way a few times, but this end of this threads into the power steering pump itself. That's what these threads are for. And then this piece spins and tightens up against and pushes the uh, pulley or pulley on which is what I need. Uh, make sure you got the a ratchet wrench for this because it's gonna make your life a lot easier. The other thing is, is before you start pulling the puller or puller pulley on there, make sure that these threads are bottomed out completely inside of the power steering pump. The reason why you wanna give yourself every chance, I mean, this ever tough brand from O'Reilly's is not that tough, so. You wanna make sure that you get these threads all the way in there so you can 100% know that when you're pushing this on there that it's gonna not pull the threads out of the power steering pump. Cause then you're gonna do this job over again and I really don't wanna do it cause it was a pain in the butt in the parking lot at the hotel, which I know we're in my shop right now, but still I don't wanna do this twice. So I got my, uh, I got my tool, uh, tools all set up. I got some extra stuff. One thing I like about having this uh, little tool tray here that raises up and down is I can put all the tools on and I have to worry about them falling down inside of the hood, down inside where I can't get them, which is pretty common. This is just gonna be nice overall. So I'll be able to, uh, you know, use my tools efficiently. So we're gonna start working on this. Hopefully I can just take this shroud off. That's my goal and pull it out of the way and I'll have enough room to get this in there and I won't have to work too hard at it, but you never know, so we'll see what happens. Thank you. 
All right, I'll show you guys in front of this thing. All right, so you can kind of look down in here and you can see what this kind of does. This is your power steering pump, obviously. You got your belt here. And then you thread this into the pump. That's what this is. And then you have this piece that pushes the pump, the power steering pulley onto the pump. And that's how it tightens it up. Now there is a different tool in here for pulling this, which is a lot less fun. And uh, it uses uh, these two halves right here. Use these two halves, goes around the end of this, which has a notch in it, if you look close. And uh, you just reverse this process with that piece down here. It goes inside, this piece goes inside of here. And these sides go over that little groove. And then it pulls it off of there. All right, guys, goes to show you it ain't always the little stuff that uh, kills you. That's the big picture, right? <laughs> uh, so I'll show you my belt here. You can see it's starting to come apart a little bit. And I really like these Fleet Runner belts. They work really, really good. And I haven't really had any issues out of them, but I don't think this is the belt's fault. I honestly think it's just me uh, not getting that pulley lined up 100%. So, oh well, it's just part of it. Um, so you can see now, if you look down in here, that on my water pump uh, pulley down there, it actually, or the fan clutch pulley, it's actually, where it's supposed to be and it's lined up. So one thing you can do is when you're looking at that, you can look and see where the belt has been riding. And so it's kind of a cheat code. You don't have to measure anything. If the belt is where it was riding, there'll be like a line on that pulley where it's been riding. And uh, you need to get that belt to be riding in that same line. And so basically just keep pushing it or pulling it on there where whichever way you need to go until it's riding in that same groove and it's lined up. Also, what you can do is look across here as well with the other pulleys uh, down through there, which on this one, it's kind of hard to look at, but on different trucks, you can look through there. And if it looks like that it's true and it's straight and it's not at an angle sideways, you're probably good to go. So last night we went to dinner, took my uh, one ton here. Um, because Olivia's car battery was dead and ended up somebody left the dome light on. So <laughs> killed the battery. But uh, anyways, we took the one ton to dinner and I kept, I, Ryan called me and said, hey, you got your tail lights out. Uh, I don't know what's going on. So at dinner, you know, being that I carry all kinds of stuff on this truck with me, just in case something happens, uh, I went to check everything out, put another fuse in the tail light fuse didn't do any good it popped the fuse immediately tried another fuse popped it looked around couldn't see anything but uh what ended up happening was i i luckily on these cm flatbeds they have like a main hook up for the lights that go up in the headache rack up here and then they have one that goes to the back lights just to the back and it's uh kind of reminds me of like the seven wire trailer uh, coating that they put like on trailer wire they run it down the bed and they also run it across the back so what I did is unhook the front that wasn't the problem then I unhooked the back and my fuse didn't pop so I knew it was something on the back uh, process of elim elimination in a mechanic in his way you got to do it sometimes uh, there's other ways to, sh to chase down a short but that worked pretty good for me so uh, anyways I found the short little by little taking each light out um, if you look right here, there is some, kind of hard to focus, but that metal was pinched in between where this light gets mounted up there and it was shorting out. So uh, there's nothing wrong with this. I just need to put a coating on this, uh, some, some wire loom, and then uh, put it back up in there. So it's not going to be a big deal. Just one of those things you got to watch whenever you're putting the light on. Um, had one of my guys do that. So can't necessarily say it's my fault but anyways it worked for a long time and now it's not so we got to get it back working <laughs> so that was what we got going on here uh i'm getting pretty close i think i'm going to end up you know preparation for going down to contempsy for the full size invasion there next weekend i think i'm going to do the rear brakes uh just do the pads just you know might as well get it done and uh i think i'm going to go ahead and uh maybe do that and then i need to do like a deep clean on the 
uh, radiator and I got a special blow gun that I use to go on the back side of the radiator, kind of give it some love and clean it out. I'm gonna adjust my headlights because I am gonna be driving at night. When I leave Thursday, probably Thursday afternoon, it's gonna take about seven, eight hours to get there. I'll be driving, it'll be dark, so do that. I'm gonna grab an extra belt just in case, because you never know, throw it in the toolbox, got an extra alternator. I'm kind of one of those mechanics that like to take special uh, precautions to just take extra parts because you never, never know. Uh, and if your alternator goes out, it's not good. So let's uh, let's get working on it. I'll let you know. Morning, guys. New day in the shop. It's Monday. We are T minus three days, not counting today, three days away from leaving for uh, Rocktoberfest down in uh, Katimsi Rocks by uh, Mason, Texas. I'm pretty excited. Uh, hopefully the transmission comes in today. I really, really want it to come in so we can get it in the truck because I need to work on the cross member and then also get my uh, power tank switches for the lockers done, which I'll probably work on that today. But uh, we got a busy day in the shop uh, scheduled here. We, we got plenty of going on. And the kicker is we're gonna be going to SEMA on uh, Monday morning next week. So I'll be going down hopefully to Katimsi uh, on Thursday if everything goes like it's supposed to. And then we'll be uh, loading up, coming back on Sunday. And then I will leave Monday morning for SEMA with the guys. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see what we can get done. I'm really, really hoping that we can get this transmission in. So we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. We're gonna get started for the day and see what we can get accomplished. Maybe even work on Ryan's truck. Surprise him a little bit. One day later. Hey guys, we're back in the shop. So the transmission finally made it today. We've had a just a, a dash to the finish here working in the shop today. It's been super hectic. I'm trying to leave Thursday to go to Katimsi to uh, go rock crawling. So one of the things was trying to get this uh, transmission here, which today is Tuesday, came in about two o'clock. Already got the transmission in, thanks to one of my guys for peeling off and helping me get it in there lined up. Uh, transfer case and Magnum is in as well. Uh, put it on outside, which I've learned is easier. <laughs> on the ground, got that all on, resealed. Um, didn't really see anything that had any red flags necessarily, but uh, it worked out pretty good. But I got it in here, now I'm working on torquing the uh, flywheel bolts uh, down to the torque converter. I um, already got all of my bell housing bolts for the LS all done, so right now I'm just going through and getting that all done. I'm trying to knock some things off the list. It's about, uh, let's see, seven o'clock, I'm burning the midnight oil. It's a uh, it's always gonna be like this. It seems like in my projects, it's a dash to the finish. So I'm gonna try to leave Thursday sometime, Thursday afternoon, late afternoon possibly, if I can peel away. Uh, I think it's gonna go pretty smooth. I never tell customers that because when I say it's gonna go smooth or this won't take long, <laughs> it doesn't ever go smooth and it takes a long time. So uh, I'm gonna start working on this. Hopefully we'll get this done, start getting some other stuff going. One thing I've learned is when you're torquing like uh, torque converter bolts, motor mounts, anything that you're torquing down to make sure it's gonna stay and you know that you've checked it off is get you a pin and uh, do a mark. Uh, sometimes when we're doing head studs, we'll uh, do one mark for the first torque sequence. So it might be 25 foot pounds per se. Uh, second sequence when you go through and do the pattern on the head bolts, you do 75 and then 100 where you mark you know, one dot, two dot, three dot, so you know you've done it. Just helps you uh, remember, because uh, head studs especially, there's so many of them, uh, or it ain't the head studs itself, but you know, the head nuts, I guess you could say. <laughs> I'm the head nut of this shop. But this helps you remember, and you don't have any mess up, so. Uh, I'm kind of a one-man show right now, trying to get this all done, but this is my project, so it's the way it is. <laughs> all right, got that torque down.
Well, good morning. We're at uh, Katemsi Rocks uh, down here in Texas, having a good time already. Got the trailer unloaded. Got in early, early this morning, about 3.30. Got me a little sleep in my Camp Right tent cot. First time using that, I really liked it. Set up in less than three minutes, and I'd never set it up before. It took me that long, probably less than that if I uh, do it again, and it was dark, so. Anyways, I just got done getting the truck ready, let some air out of the tires. Uh, just kind of checking over some things, getting the cooler strapped down, you know, doing things you gotta do when you start wheeling for the day. So, truck's looking good. I'm really happy with the way it's sitting right now. What we're going for is that ride height, a little bit more of it. So I'm happy with it. Everything's looking like it's supposed to. Truck did well, got down here. It's about an almost eight hour drive. So we're gonna go out here today and see what we can get into, guys. Hopefully, uh, the next two days of wheeling is gonna be a good time. There's gonna be a lot of people that were here from Full Size Invasion. And so I've already got to see a few of them. Life is good. So we'll see what we can get into, guys. trail uh, first day first obstacle we already got some breakage uh, fixed the drive line looks like we might be fixing another one so let's see what happens here a few moments I do uh, yeah I'm gonna I need to I guess I do need to fire that up huh Like we need to do this one more time, huh? I don't have much room when it's just sitting. Like I've only got an inch and a half on the slip. Like it's, yeah. I'm like, ah, I'm gonna need a long drill. Old forestry truck? Yeah. Yeah. I see the the tag up there, the right, yellow it was, tag. It was all original when I bought it. Stock, really? Everything ran, drove, and then we chopped it all out. It was ah. originally a donor truck. We bought it for the axles, and it was. I was like, well, it's it's your truck, man. Do what you will. I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just gonna build this. One. Let the old 6-2 grab leader eat. Fucking, I keep waiting for it to die. Yeah. Oh, they, they they don't have enough power to mess themselves up. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, shoot, if you put a magnum on one of these yeah, things, it'd be great. 
Seriously. Yeah, I figured if it goes eventually, I'll put a 4BT in it or something. <laughs> Ooh, that'd be a sweet if setup. I keep it diesel for fun. Yeah. How much spline did you have? That right. Was it? Uh, I, before, like, full huh. That we could make one out of a strap. Yeah, we'll probably go now. I did the same thing. Aaron did the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> I thought the dog out of business. Time to get to work. Be like it's nothing. Lift up? I think so. I haven't walked back that far yet. <laughs> yeah. That's 20 feet away, man. It's too much. That, that's probably when it happened. Mm -hmm. yeah, you got in Looks like a 1310. Yeah. So, yeah. you got spare ones of those, right? That's all you run in yours, right? It's 1310? 1550. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've already been down that road. Sadly. You gotta winch it down. The only person that gets away with it that really, uh, that really surprises me is Rogue right here. Yeah, then I can just go well, back you can just and drive out. Yeah. out that's because he's easy on yeah, it. That's the problem. Uh, yeah. yeah, you couldn't go back for forward. Forward. I bet if we winch him, it'll, it might unload the rear. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Hey, Josh, I have that other drive shaft. What are you doing? Going on it. Um, yeah, I just got to get it off the yeah, right. first. Um, I need... Oh. Yeah, we're out on the trail. We have yeah, a yeah, trail. Trail. Brad, you and me can go out. <laughs> well, I've got to go to, like, the entrance and do a couple of pictures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, well, look at that flexing out on that six-inch rock. I can disconnect the sway bar and actually make it flex. Yeah, we'll just hang out. And you got winch on the front of your ears. You got a winch on that. Yeah, let me know.
uh, school bus obstacle we're getting ready to hit here in just a minute and it's supposed to be pretty sweet we'll see how it is it's supposed to be pretty challenging and we're getting ready to find out how challenging it is the truck's doing great uh, the new torque converter the 4L80 is just killing it super super happy with the way that it's working I mean it's it's doing it's doing every all the things you want it to do slow it's got plenty of power things are just working out here at Katimsi having a good time we've already had some carnage going on everything's going great trucks doing awesome can't ask for better uh, for the truck man I've got into uh, a little bit of the uh, rock slider here but that's about the worst body damage that I have seen a lot of cool rigs it's been awesome kind of meeting everybody and having a good time pulling a guy off this rock right now trying to get him uh, out of here He's got his leaf spring hung up so we're working on that, but all in all, I'm really enjoying Katemsi uh, down here near Mason, Texas. Uh, highly recommend if you guys are uh, wanting to go to a place where there's a lot of technical rock crawling. This is great. And I'm just here refining the rig, making sure that everything's working like it's supposed to and uh, trying to get better as a driver so I get more experience and, you know, just making sure everything works. It's, life is good. Uh, I'm really impressed with the truck. It's doing awesome. So we're going to keep on hitting the trail, see what's going on. Okay. Alright. Okay. So we need to go that way. guys it's a uh, Monday after I got back from uh, Katimsi down in Texas uh, off-road park uh, we got back early uh, Saturday morning and uh, I'm just now getting uh, this thing unloaded so I kind of wanted to go over a few things with you guys uh, number one I had an awesome time it's cold here it was not cold there in Katimsi when we we're doing the rock crawling it was really really nice weather it did rain overnight and i say rain it more like sprinkled more than anything but uh man the truck did awesome we had a 
we had a pretty good group, you know, from Full Size Invasion that came to Moab. That's, you know, one of the main reasons I wanted to go down there is just, you know, to experience with those guys again, you know, some of the working together and just getting together as a group. And we just have a good time, you know, I feel like we've been friends for years. It almost feels like they're firemen, but they're not. <laughs> but uh, the truck did really well. I got, I got it into some pretty good spots. I ended up, my GoPro fell on one of the obstacles and busted the lens. Thank God I have two of them. But uh, the rock down there, the best way to describe the rock would be really, really coarse. So I would say it's kind of more like 40 grit sandpaper versus Moab, which has like maybe 100 grit sandpaper. So the only bad thing is like in Katemsi, whenever you're you're on trails, which it's not made for full sizes there, but full sizes work. So, the, and that's my, my gig. So uh, I, on a lot of the obstacles, you know, it was just grinding the truck down. And what I mean by that is whenever you would hit an obstacle or hit something, it literally grinds into the steel. It doesn't just take the paint off like Moab. Uh, I'll show you on my, on my uh, bead locks here, you can see the aluminum, it just digs in, which this is the first time I really got into those, but they did their job. These Dirty Life wheels are just uh, legit and they worked awesome. No problems out of them. But I'll show you some of the new scratches I got on this thing that uh, are pretty impressive. Uh, again, the truck did great, but you can see I got full use out of my rock sliders. All that rusty stuff, that's like ground down. Uh, you can see, I mean, look, it, it actually moves steel right there. Uh, it, it just really, really tests the limits of your rig. Uh, oh, this happened on nosedive. Uh, it didn't just get into the paint. It, it dented it in pretty good. So I'm probably going to have to have Kevin work on that. Uh, it's in a real good spot, but I just barely touched it. And then right here as well, you can see it got down into the paint. But uh, we were on a uh, obstacle... Uh, in the back 40, if you look this place up, it's in the back 40, and uh, it's called Smoking Butthole, and it's pretty steep, pretty hard to hard to do for any rig, I guess you could say, but this, it really, really tested it, and uh, I got it literally on two wheels sideways, and the other, other two wheels were resting on the, you know, the side of the truck in this notch, and then the cab was literally sitting on the rock, and you can see Whenever I started to drive away, it got into the cab, you know, quite a bit. So this is kind of the first real legit body damage that I've had on this truck, other than what it had whenever I got it. So, you know, all in all, I feel like it did a great job. Uh, I really like wheeling it. And the cool thing about Katempsi is I feel like that I got better as a driver and uh, my skills as a driver literally increased every day even though we only wheeled for two full days i feel like every time we went out i was getting better as a driver and just thankful for guys like aaron and brad from full size and then you know james which has basically kind of the same style square body as mine the tan one you've probably seen through full size invasion uh it he does awesome he kills it he's got an awesome rig it's got four link suspension it's got a six two as well it just does awesome and uh, i'm just thankful for those guys you know thankful that uh jared puts it on every year and does different events because man i just love going out and wheeling having a good time but uh really happy with the truck and uh, it continues to impress uh it's just getting better and better i think i i've literally scraped the link bars quite a few times and then also i think the other link bar is uh bent maybe just a little bit not bad but it's bent and yeah, it has a slight bend to it, but you can see where I hit real hard on it. Uh, but that's one thing that I've thought about. Do I want to go with an aluminum link bar? Because they are more rigid, they're solid, they're maybe just a hair lighter, and uh, they're strong. But <clears throat> the only thing that I'm worried about is if I go to those aluminum link bars, yet, you know... I can't weld the aluminum on the trail I can with my, like I can with my steel ones here. But if I don't have another tube, I can't weld it in either. So I guess it's kind of a catch-22. So I'm kind of debating on whether getting aluminum link bars, especially for the back, maybe just the lowers, and then also the front lowers as well. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do that. Maybe call Steven at Offroad Design and see if I can get some made up. I just, I really like the way they look, and they're like two and a half inch thick, big, big. Uh, they're just, they're just massive. So, anyways, I'm gonna probably do that. Um, 
yeah life is good so i just want to get this thing unloaded i'm getting ready to me and the boys ryan jacob we're getting ready to head to sema and las vegas for a full week we're leaving today uh, taking off like at three so pretty excited about that uh just to get to go see all the stuff like if you guys have never been to sema i highly recommend it it is so cool there's so many vehicles hot rods trucks cars everything you can imagine there and uh, it's just super cool to meet everyone that you've seen on tv for years and just the the whole the whole experience like we were there last year for a full five days and we weren't able to see everything because it was so big so vast and uh, there's so much to see so i'm going to take my uh, gopro along and try to get some of the footage of that and then also i'm going to try to you know uh make some more contacts because you know what they say guys it's not what you know it's who you know so let's get this uh rock crawler unloaded maybe clean it up it's a little cold but we'll get it cleaned up and got some errands to run got to put the trailer away because it's been out in the rain and man i can't do that to my new trailer so uh, let's get this thing unloaded